When people say things are just not happening the way I want them to happen and they say I can't find a job or I've lost a job or they say I can't find a husband or I can't find a wife or for example I'm, I don't have enough money, I don't have a place, I really am struggling, my health is just not you know, getting better, I can't find what's wrong with me, I don't know, things are just not right, I don't have friends, I've got problems with the people around me. I really am facing so much of difficulty and difficulty upon difficulty and the Almighty just seems like he doesn't even care for me and I don't know I've been calling out to him and I don't know why he's not responding and you know I'm just struggling and I think I've just had enough people say we don't have children we've been trying for children for a long long time we really really cannot continue this way it's a very very difficult thing and I think I've been calling out to the Almighty for a long long time and he just doesn't listen Astaghfirullah. <laughs> my brothers and sisters very very important uh, points that are raised by some of you and I think we need to address this remember something the Creator who created myself yourselves an entire creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the maker we call him the nourisher the cherisher the sustainer the provider the protector the curer the one in absolute control of every aspect of existence the one who knows what is best for you and I the owner of the unseen the owner of all knowledge that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah knows what is best for you and not only what is best for you, he knows whether what you want is actually good for you. And if it is, then when it is good for you. Sometimes you want something, but it's not good for you now. Sometimes you want something, it's not good for you at all, but you don't know. I know of people, for example, who don't have children. And I pray that Allah bless them with children. But we need to get used to a certain... Sorry, let me speak slowly, inshallah. Okay. We need to get used to calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that we leave it up to him if he knows this is better for us let it happen so when you say oh Allah I desperately want to marry this person if it is good for me if it is good for my future if it is good for my deen my dunya my life and so on uh, my hereafter then let it happen and if it is not good for me then keep it away from me is that not a fair dua a lot of you would say, nah, it's not. I want a million pounds or a million dollars and I need it. You know, if Allah knows it's not good for you, he won't give it to you. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, there is something in Islam called istikhara, meaning to seek the guidance of the Almighty. So you've got to read a little supplication that was taught by the Prophet, peace be upon him. He says that the companions were taught this the companions say we learnt it we memorized it and we used to read it as though we were reading a verse of the Quran so in that prayer it says oh Allah I ask you from your knowledge because you know and I don't know you know what is better for me I don't know and you know you are the one who will choose I'm not the one who will choose you are the Almighty I'm not the Almighty you know, I don't know, you are the knower of the unseen. Oh Allah, if what I want is better for me, my current life, my future, my life after death, then make it good for me, make it easy for me, make, it, make me able to achieve it and give it to me and bless me once you've given it to me. Bless me in it, meaning grant me blessings through that particular thing. And if it is not good for me, for my present time, for my future, for my hereafter, uh, for my livelihood, then keep it away from me and keep me away from it and make me happy with your decree. Make me happy with what you've chosen, knowing that it's best for me. That last portion is absolutely important. When things don't work out, your duty is to keep trying. You don't lose hope. You keep trying. And you keep doing what you believe is good for you because the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk wasta'in billahi wala ta'jaz. Keep working hard towards achieving what you firmly believe is best for you. And don't lose hope. Don't lose hope ever. Keep going. And if the Almighty has written that you're going to have it, you will have it. If not, he will open other doors in the process. You know, I've come across people who've lost their jobs. 
Then they went on their own. They, they suffered a loss. Then they tried another venture. They suffered another loss. And when they tried the third or the fourth or the fifth venture, they made so much money that it was the best thing they ever did. They actually earned enough. They became multimillionaires. So wasn't that the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wasn't that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening the doors and saying to you that, you know what? I am actually going to give you the fifth door that you're going to be knocking on that is going to be greater than all the other doors that you've had so far. Wasn't it worth trying two, three, four, five times, the fifth time? Look at the wealthy on the globe. They really, a lot of them have failed in their lives at some stage, but they didn't lose hope. They kept on going and they kept on trying. And one day the doors opened. So we've said this in the past, but we need a reminder of it. I give you another example. When you don't have children, and we all love to have children, and may Allah bless you with children, we get angry. But I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, I've known of people who've ch whose children have harassed them and troubled them and made their lives so difficult and abandoned, not only abandoned, but even tortured them to the degree that they prayed. They prayed against their own children. And we shouldn't be doing this. You pray a good prayer, not against them. You pray a good prayer. And that's the sign of a parent. No matter what your child has done, you pray for them, not against them. There's a difference between the two. One is you're saying something good for them. And the other is you're actually asking the Almighty to destroy them. You don't do that. Uh, no matter who it is and what it is, you actually ask the Almighty to protect uh, or to protect you from their evil and to guide them, to soften their hearts, to solve, solve the matter and so on. So sometimes the Almighty doesn't give you children because maybe he knows that they might be disabled, they might be challenged, they might be in a way that you might not cope. Other people can cope, other people can manage, they are managing and they will be rewarded by the Almighty. So when the Almighty knows it's good for them, he may give them, but he may not give you because he knows you won't cope. Maybe if the death of that child was written at five years, the Almighty knows that you won't manage, you won't cope. You know, there are other people who've lost their children and they've coped. Some have struggled. And like I always say, no matter who tries to explain to a person who's lost a child, nobody will truly understand the exact difficulty and hardship and, and, and you know, the emptiness that they feel because You've got to go through it to feel it. May Allah grant ease to all those who have suffered in this way. So sometimes the Almighty doesn't give you the child. Sometimes he gives you the child. Sometimes he makes you go through hardship and difficulty one after the other. And a day will come when that will come to pass. How many of us, we've even forgotten the days we were struggling. So keep going. That's the message I have. Keep going. Keep having hope. Even if you're terminally ill, you keep having hope and you die with that hope if need be. But when you die with hope, you've died very close to the Almighty. You've died having pleased the Almighty with a powerful relationship with Him because you had hope. He taught you to have hope and you died with that hope. And who knows, the Almighty may grant you cure that hope, that might, that belief, that conviction that you're definitely going to be cured. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So this is why I say don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep going. He has not abandoned you. He has never abandoned you. But we tend to lose hope because we want things in our time. It's good to happen at, in the time of the Almighty. It will always happen in his time. Don't make haste. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِلْ you know, your prayers are answered for as long as you don't make haste. So he was asked, what is the meaning of making haste? He says, when you say, I have prayed and I have called out, but the Almighty is not listening to me. He says, I've listened to you. I heard you. I know when it's right to give you what you're asking. You desperately want to marry someone, but you don't know they will be maybe a means of your downfall. They might be a means of destruction. They might be a means of your sadness, your loss, and so much more. It might end up in an ugly condition. So the Almighty says, we're not going to let it happen from the beginning because we love you. 
Why don't you trust the Almighty? Why don't you realize, you know what, I've got to let this thing go and carry on. You can set a deadline, you can keep trying, like I said, you keep trying, but there comes a time when you have to move on in things like those. I mean, this example is, you know, you might think there's a contradiction in what I'm saying. On one hand, I'm saying, don't lose hope and keep going. And on the other hand, I'm saying, at certain times, you've got to let go. But the difference is, when it comes to something that your life has come to a standstill regarding, you've got to keep going, as in, you've got to keep trying maybe another job and a third job and a fourth job. So if it didn't work, if your marriage with one didn't work, you try someone else and maybe it might not work again and you try a third one. Fourth time lucky, perhaps. The same applies to your jobs. The same applies to your health. You might be ill for a year, for two years, for five years. But if you keep going, keep trying, go here, go there, a day will come when you will be much better by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've known of people who've been sick and ill for 12 years. And after that, they came totally free of the sickness they had. Sometimes people suffer eczemas for a year, for two years, for five years, for 10 years. And after that, something happens and, you know, they've had the olive oil treatment, for example, they've had some other treatment, the Zamzam treatment, and they get better. And that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we become depressed and suicidal, imagine there was a little bit left for you to actually get better. That small moment and you were not patient enough to bear that. And so you lost hope and you did something terrible. That's not how it should be. So don't lose hope. There is nothing, nothing that the Almighty cannot resolve. He is merciful. He will have mercy on you. We spoke about forgiveness in the past. Today, I'm speaking about hope and understanding the plan of the Almighty. He knows what's best. He knows the time that it's going to come. So don't depress yourself. You know, we've all had cases where myself included, we've all had cases where we've desperately wanted something, desperately wanted something. We've tried hard to get it and it did not come. And it just did not come. What do you do? Well, you've got to try something else. You've got to try, you've got to settle for second best, third best. And one day you might realize that what you thought was third best and fourth best is actually better than what you thought was the best. Who knows? Who knows? It's Allah alone who knows. Life is too short to block yourself stop it from from you know stop yourself from living it just because of one thing that has happened in your life or two or three you know you don't stop your life from live from being lived look at those who are on the streets and they don't have look at those who've been driven out of their homes look at those in war zones who are struggling they walk miles in the cold look at those in refugee camps across the globe look at those who have less than you look at those who have nothing a lot of them are quite content actually they keep trying and they have hope that tomorrow is going to be better than today that continues for years a day comes when suddenly wow allah opens that door and it, it's open very very wide so this was our topic for today and i pray that we've benefited from it and uh, alhamdulillah it was very beneficial to have told you uh, to give me some feedback and to give me topics that we can talk about on a daily basis perhaps and like I said, every day we'll try and say just 10 minutes, a word of advice, inshallah, something to discuss by the will of Allah. And tomorrow we're going to have another very, very interesting topic, inshallah, perhaps more interesting than this one. But uh, inshallah, I hope that we can tune in once again. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.